So the fig trees have nearly lost all their beautiful yellow leaves. Here's my rosemary growing beautifully. Look at the Catoni Aster with its red, red berries, which birds love. Here's some wallflower, my purple sage. There's some valerian and a rose. So down here is next year's honesty. There's some more honesty and more honesty and valerian, a foxglove, another foxglove. This is all to look forward next year, more foxgloves. Look at all the foxgloves, valerian, Canterbury bells. All kinds of, this is willow herb, these tall ones here, willow herb, a wonderful pollinator that goes up into the garden. So winter does look bleak, but things are always growing, and over here got some hydrangeas and look at that fleet vein still still flowering still flowering look we still have flowers this little tree has lost its leaves in the wind we haven't had a frost to kill off this dahlia here's my lavender Still producing the odd flower. There's thyme on the floor there. Things do look bleak. Look, the succulents are still flowering and producing. Over here, I still have Shasta daisies. There's a bit of valerian. Then there is over here. Love these. These pots are still flowering. This is the second of November and I still have these blooms. These are not frost hardy and they're still blooming. Here are hydrangeas and nasturtiums are hidden amongst them. Still blooming, 2nd of November. There's that seedling. I planted that as a seedling a number of years ago. And look at how big it's gotten. This is the dry garden that never got any watering during the summer drought. It's doing really well. The mullins are ready to sow their seeds. Look at that. And some of them are still flowering. Look at that. And the valerian's still flowering. The passion flower. The evening primrose. These are oxide daisies. These are not Shasta daisies. These are oxide daisies are flowering. So evening primrose. Some more seed heads artichoke seed heads and then look the passion flower still flowering still flowering and then there's food here for birds spindle look at this spindle over here is looking beautiful its leaves have fallen but its berries are bright or its berries covers are bright pink and its fruit is orange and the yellow of the silver birch. Now, this is another birch, hasn't turned its leaves yet, but here, look at the pheasant berry. These berries, birds love these berries. 
You can see they're all ripening up the stem. This will be full of birds when these berries all ripen. Look at that. What's amazing is you cut it down to the scut of the ground and it bushes up even more. These were only planted spring of last year and they're huge. So there is food for the birds. Amazingly this year, the birds have not touched my feeders yet. I only put them out a few days ago and the birds have not touched my bird feeders because there's so much food that I have been intentionally growing over the years. Like you'll have small birds, a lot of the finches and things will perch on, this, on these stalks and eat the seeds out of the seed heads. They're so, I love, there's streaks of black up against the stone. Anyway, that's enough before breakfast wanderings around the garden. The chickens have been fed. The horses now Paca have been fed. are being blown off trees. I'd say after this storm, a lot of trees will be stripped of their autumn color. Look at this. These geraniums are still blooming. Look at that. This is still blooming. That's what farming for biodiversity is. And I'm grateful that the birds aren't eating from the bird feeders. This means I'm fee I have been producing enough food for the native wildlife.